Alright, now this next section would be a small section on the League of Nations. I will not be spending too much time on it, but I will be highlighting certain questions in which you need to take note of, okay? Because uh, as easy as it may seem from what you have been doing, there are in fact challenging questions for the League of Nations. Okay, you cannot assume that they're going to ask something that is very simple and straightforward and then you just, you know, do the normal success failure kind of thing. Now, um, for the League of Nations, you have to, uh, just a very brief introduction or a brief recap of what is it all about. It was created by, uh, it was created by America who suggested that they should have some form of uh, so-called like a police like uh, so they created this leak in order to ensure that the that there will not be another war again okay now if you take a look at these aims here uh, I believe that most of you would have ignored that aims when you're writing your essays you would have just memorized uh, you know the stuff that is below here okay but take note the aims are important Okay, the first aim that they have down there is political aim, um, which if you look at one of my sample essays later, you would we would say it as that is one of the main aims. Okay, the political aim is to resolve international conflicts through negotiations and disarmament. Okay, now you would also notice later in one of my League of Nations sample essays that I included disarmament as well, even though that is considered a separate section. Okay, now uh, this is the main aim. Okay, of the League of Nations. Basically, if you cannot remember this thing, you just have to remember that the League of Nations aim to prevent another war from happening. That's basically it. Okay. Now, the secondary aim is social aim. Okay, it's a social aim to help to improve the standard of living for people around the world. Okay, so basically, we look at it from two points of view, but the main one it is still to resolve international conflicts, uh, which also to prevent another war so please keep that in mind okay now um, having that main aim you would have realized that with the start of World War II uh, League of Nations failed okay so uh, with that kind of aim in mind and uh, with the creation of League of Nations by the United States of America uh, they actually didn't do much okay now uh, you will look at the examples that are given here and these examples would actually show you whether or not are they a success or are they a failure under political success and failures, there are only four case studies, two each, okay, of a success and a failure. But you will realize that um, this is just a just some that we have picked up from the textbook. The textbook actually produced, uh, they provided a lot more examples than that. Please look at your textbooks, okay? There are a few other examples that you can use and take note of. And uh, I will highlight to you one other question later which requires you to use a lot more examples than this. Okay? Now, um, first of all, uh, if you look at all these examples given under successes, if you read it by yourself, try to remember the various small little countries like Sweden, Finland. Try not to confuse yourself between these. Okay? I'm not going to elaborate on this because it's as straightforward as it can get. Okay, now this one, let me just talk a little bit more about this one, okay, because this is related to the Treaty of Versailles. Okay, the real crisis uh, refers to the Treaty of Versailles when France is supposed to receive reparations from Germany. And when Germany were, was unable to pay, France actually invaded Germany and they call it the real crisis. Okay, and League of Nations did not do anything as France was a leading member. Now, this is an important point to take note of. One of the reasons why the leak failed, you will realize as they elaborate further down below, is that uh, the, they did not do anything whenever there was a leading member of the League of Nations that was uh, doing something wrong. Okay, Because the League of Nations, you have to notice uh, that they are primarily controlled by the big two countries, that is Britain and France. Of course, America is not involved, that's why I didn't say the big three. Uh. Okay, it's just Britain and France. Okay, whenever anything, any kind of crisis, any kind of situation 
which would cause France and Britain to be at a losing advantage or to lose out in any way, right? The League of Nations would not do anything. Take a look at examples here, okay? All these countries, they have no links whatsoever to Britain and France, and therefore, they left them alone, okay? And not say left them, sorry, not left them alone, but therefore, the League of Nations were, were able to take some action over this, okay? So that is the difference. And so that's why I say this is an important point to take note of. Okay, start thinking about the stuff, don't just memorize them. Okay? Okay, now the reasons for the failure are as straightforward as it can get. You can read on your own. I don't believe this needs a lot of explanation because this is quite straightforward. Okay? So I will move on to another question. Okay, now these this are the, the last two questions are the two League of Nations questions. Uh, I believe that you all would remember that most of the questions that I've asked uh, when I taught you all last year was regarding the League of Nations was considered a success or the League of Nations was a complete failure. Do you agree? Explain your answer. Okay, now that one is very straightforward. But if you look at this one, uh, question 9. Okay, the League, of Na the League of Nations failed to achieve any of its aims in the 1920s. Do you agree? Ah, you see, if they come up with a question like this, you need to know what are its aims. And most of your as I remember from your essays last year, you did not write any of his aims at all. Okay, so please take note of this. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, please take note of this and uh, make sure that um, you, you know what are the aims of the League of Nations as I've mentioned just now. Okay, now the benefit for you is that I've provided you with a sample essay so you can look at it down below. Hang on. Okay, this is the sample essay as provided for down below. The League of Nations failed to achieve any of its aims. Identify the two aims. Okay, then you write whether or not there's a success or failure. Now, if you notice, uh, the first aim, the political aim, resolve international conflicts and also disarmament. So that's why you would realize that I added some stuff about disarmament over here as well okay to show that they failed okay because the disarmament part right is actually a very very small part so uh, I'm very afraid that they would not produce and so far O levels has not asked a question on that so uh, we I, I don't expect it I, um, I cannot say for sure okay but because it's a small part I incorporated it into this part under the League of Nations as well okay so that at least they you know the give some more weight to this particular essay Okay, take a look at the conclusion. It would have been very clear to show you whether or not did they achieve the aim. Do you agree with that statement? Okay, and in here I argued uh, that uh, I disagree with the statement because, okay, now take a look at the question. The question says failed to achieve any of its aims. Okay, they definitely achieved the social aim. So there was something done. So therefore, you can completely disagree with the statement. Unless the question asks something like, the League of Nations failed to achieve its main aim. Ah, then you would agree with the statement because the main aim is a political aim to prevent another war, okay? And they failed to do that. So then you can agree with the statement. So please read the question carefully. Try to think about it, okay? Don't just use your super memorizing skills once again to apply it to the question. Not all the question works that way. All right. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the League of Nations. You will realize that I focus on the more challenging questions for these uh, so-called online lectures. And um, let's see. Yeah, uh, the Treaty of Versailles. I'm not going to go through. Okay. Such as this and this. You all have done it a billion times. There's not much variation to these kind of questions. So that's why I am not bothering to spend time on them. Okay. I will, however, include the next lecture on uh, this armament. Okay, down here, and as well as maybe talk a little bit about it to Germany as well. Okay, the disarmament, I made some minor edits to the notes, so please take note, I will uh, look out for it in the next lecture. Okay.